Founded on a strong conviction for long-term investment in the global copper mining industry, First Quantum Minerals is a world-leading and fast-growing copper producer. In 2010, the company acquired a license to develop the Sentinel Mine at Kalumbila in the northwestern province of Zambia, marking the start of 20 years of innovation, transformation and development of Zambia's copper industry. Copper Belt was the hub of mining and suddenly, um, 10 years ago, Northwestern started taking its course. And before you know it, there's this green field, there's nothing there. And suddenly, step by step, still by still, Sentinel came up. And what does that mean? What it means is that whatever we have here is the kind of technology that no one has ever seen. Take, for example, the rope shovel. The rope shovel, nobody had ever seen anything like that. I remember the first time that I got on top of it, I was like, what is this, you know? And I found two Zambians being trained uh, to actually operate the rope shovel. The country's vision to become a global leader in copper production is centered around ensuring that current needs continue to be met in the years ahead and present challenges inspire lasting solutions for the future. In 1996, somebody sat and said, hmm, there should be something we can do in this country. And what do we need? Few people got together and put in whatever they could, the resources, the, the, the uh, technology, know-how, and said there's something in Zambia. We are not just thinking about people who were after a profit. We are thinking about people who said they could make a mark on the Zambian unemployment phase that a lot of young people, university graduates, didn't get jobs and contribute massively to the national economy. If we are going to make ourselves be a global copper mining um, company that everybody will reckon with, there's something we need to do different. Mega mines are created by global investment. There, we have a lot of players that have an investment in our company. The initial uh, capital outlay for this, this mine was around 2.2 billion US dollars. In saying that, um, with foreign investment, uh, investors always like to see uh, returns on their investment and, and that's measured by our performance and how we produce copper and at what price we produce it. Being a mining company, you know that mining is, um, is a very big thing in Zambia. Uh, it's, uh, it contributes immensely to uh, the national income and um, as such there are a lot of interested parties and there are some reporting that we do over and above what uh, an average company will do. So we do reports to the Ministry of uh, Mines for instance. Uh, we do reports to uh, the Bank of Zambia. Uh, ZRA sometimes does request for ad hoc reports. We do those as well. And uh, we also report internally to um, our group uh, team. So this is uh, a global entity. Uh, that means that uh, we are not just in Zambia. Yeah, so we are a subsidiary of First Quantum Minerals and uh, we do report to First Quantum Minerals. Um, and obviously First Quantum Minerals is a listed company, so there are a lot of other people, individuals and entities who will be interested in the financial results. It takes a combination of massive funding, state-of-the-art technology and expertise to turn the low-grade copper deposits at FQM Zambia's Sentinel Mine into a leading global source of copper. 
you're a, a low grade mine. So this mine has to be pr productive. Uh, we, we can't afford not to, to make our targets. We need to make sure that we conserve electricity. We need to make sure that our people are, are focused and that we don't have accidents which leads to, to, to more copper production. The success of that job is underpinned by whether the people have the right knowledge, the right skills and the right attributes uh, for that work that they're doing. So if that underpins the success of a job, training and development is the medium to give people the knowledge and the skills to actually do that job. Otherwise they can't, you can't expect them to perform. In the quest to further improve the productivity and output of the mine, Sentino has identified skills development and knowledge transfer as a key driver of long-term sustainable growth. Training is most probably the most important aspect of, of our people, uh, is upping the skill sets of, of Zambians and, and ensuring that as time goes by that, that the Zambian um, workforce is, is at the same skill level as you'd have an expat. The uh, expats are well trained, specialised trained and unfortunately some of this training takes two to three some even five years to get the right skill set. So the transfer of skills takes quite a long time to, to ensure that a guy is well trained and um, knows what he's doing. The problem with, with a lot of what we do here is, is the size of, of the equipment. So the skill set around computer training, um, process training, systems training is very important and to ensure that, that our guys are skilled. We, we spend a lot of time and effort training our people, specifically, um, and I'll start off in the mining, there's special simulators that we have that um, the operators have to, to pass the test before they can be put into the trucks, and then they, they buddy up with um, a trainer in the truck until they deem competent to drive on their own. Um, they also have to do refresher courses on these um, simulators, if, if if something goes wrong in, in the mine, we have to simulate that and the guys have to try and see if they can drive to that condition in the simulator before uh, they go back out into the field. If you look at this um, project, you look at a project that has brought so many nationalities together and each one of them has brought their own expertise that has never been known in the mining industry. One thing I love about Face Quantum is that it promotes diversity. Uh, you know, we work with people from different nationalities, different backgrounds, you know, different cultures. Um, one thing I've learned from my experience is that we are all one people. I've, I've learned a lot from my colleagues who are of different uh, cultures. The fact that we are a diversity you know, team, it means we share a lot of ideas, we share a lot of experiences, but uh, at the same time we have uh, one common goal as Face Quantum. I've had the opportunity to move through every single department here in the metallurgy department, so I'm getting a real feel for the plant from the front end right through to the back end and then concentrate shipping uh, to the smelters. So it's been a, a massive learning experience and every day I'm just learning new things about not only uh, the company and the process but the culture here in Zambia which I'm really enjoying as well. I think our very nature as Zambians render us to work with multinationals. Um, however, of course, like anybody else, there are a few clashes in terms of culture. Um, for example, people definitely are at the heart of um, FQM. They are more people-centric than um, we people would perceive us to be.
We've got over um, 2,700 um, employees and uh, an additional around the same number of contractors. So we're talking about 5,000 um, 5, plus employees altogether. We have um, about 26 or more than 26 nationalities here at Sentinel. We realize that to have so many people in one place, there's bound to be clashes. And this is what we try to avoid. And because we want to make one big high performance teams, we don't want anything that can destroy that. We don't want anything that, and so communication for us is key. We are not there yet, but we are trying as much as possible to make sure that we work as one big team and not as a team that is seen to be, you know, in different classes, in order for us to be known as a global copper making mine. We don't want to be known as a, as a global miner when there are all these other issues that we can't handle. We need to make sure that everything that we do, we invest in our employees, we invest in each and everything that we do. We also invest in our communities, those that, we, uh, that surround the, the, mining, uh, the mining area. We need to invest in everybody and everybody is happy. And of course, we invest at national level and that is what we want to be known by. One of the um, most important things with, with any, any mine are its people. There's a huge focus on people and we can see the improvements all around from, from when our people first got here. We've, um, we've developed a town, uh, people are happy here and um, going forward their skill set base has, has changed. So we have a, a really good proactive workforce and the focus is, is making sure that our people deliver and are very productive. And, and obviously with that we have a happy workforce. Nanguinga, my Saro de Shamunomi in Muka and Tinmuno, Marasanga, my Echara, Nanguama, Aba Sungu, and say, Today the Panga, Pamo. But in Goya Kuns, around for Chao Muma, and you might walk up to the Rara Sangaba Sungu, a lady of whom be, but you were in a Munawe, Takwabe, if you won't say in Sas and be the Pano is Bunsas and the but in the Rida Pamonawas and be the Rabaku to buy from an Amiaro Fim Bifim Bifi, but to trade it and have been a Pamabati. What in Shaman of what Tababa and Akapa to the Repoca Kumofi, Nangu Wari, Nayan, and Ramfum Yaguine, Nomusunga and Abam Pierre when I were in a war. Nangura is in an Adam or Ramfum Shiramana in a Muramina and I and Omusunga, but Ramu Pera will win a rice Mumpoto in Momo to deal. To have something that you are known by, it should be, it shouldn't be different. So, meaning that everywhere where you go, you might as well find what you see here is what you're going to find. It, it doesn't matter whether it's Africa, it doesn't matter whether it's Latin America, it doesn't matter if it's in Australia, in Canada, it's, it's just face quantum. There's just one slogan that has always been there, the one Zambia, one nation. So this company, it's got different people that have come out from different setups, but they're still working on as a team, yeah, uh, to make sure that at least business goes on and to make sure that we also sustain up our lives. So there's a one Zambia, one nation culture still moves on in FKM. What we found is that even though people are coming out of the local education system with trade and craft qualifications, their actual skills required to do their job, there's a major gap. Now, one could sit and debate the qualifications versus the competence issue till you're blue in the face. At the end of the day, competence is king over here. Every job 
has got certain conditions that require a certain type of person to be successful. Because most of the people who are here are anything from, you know, those who have just graduated. And we've got graduates on training that have never, never stepped in a, in a working uh, environment before. And these are given a chance to prove themselves and at the end of the day, being integrated into the system. What are we unlocking? We are unlocking skills. We are uh, uh, unlocking uh, national economy. And indeed, First Quantum is really a partner in development because of what has been unlocked so far. A perfect example, we just recently uh, introduced a trainee truck driver program specifically for Chief Miseli's people. So what we would do is we, we first need to find out what the raw potential is of those individuals. Uh, we're currently applying an assessment called Vienna Dover. This assessment tells us um, a range of information. Um, one of the assessments in that will tell us um, one of your predictors of success as an operator are your levels of aggression. So if you are an overly aggressive person, it is generally a predictor that you will have accidents or you will damage equipment. This is something that's scientifically used across the globe by most of your major mining houses. So we will put a large group of people through these assessments. We will identify those that come up with, with the best attributes. In other words, the best chances of success as a truck operator in a mining environment. What we then do from there is we put them through the same training program as any of our experienced operators would have been through. What that essentially says is that you, you want the best people working on that project to be able to reduce costs, uh, uh, you know, produce copper with the best efficiencies that are, you know, that are available. That requires like, it's the best team. It's not the best team within 7,000 kilometers from here. It's just, it's just the best team money can buy or the best team that you'll be able to find. And uh, that could mean someone like me being able to work in South Africa or being able to work in South America like I'm currently doing. And uh, it could also mean that it's a local person. But, you know, it's, it's, it's not about the passport or the nationality they, 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 they acquire, but there are certain roles that you want the best people to be in those roles. I was employed by the same company, FKM. I was taken to Kansanshi for training. There I spent three years, from 2010 to 2013. That's when I was brought in here as a, an operator, as a competent operator. So I've been operating a dump truck from 2013 up to now. I love my job because I was not expecting to, to drive or to operate a big truck like the one I'm operating now. With the good training that I've acquired here, the company has trained me to, to operate in their way. I think it's the best experience that I've had because I'll adhere to their rules and regulations and that is making me come out as one of the best operators. I'm telling myself to be one of the best. Yeah. It's, it's very important because it helps us. Like, I'll start from my point of view. It helps me in the sense that it's new and I'm one of the operators, meaning I have an opportunity if, if something comes and then you are number one on that machine or you are the first to operate, then you've got, of course, vast chances and how to progress in that area. And then to the company, it's good because, like Sentinel Kalumbira, we had the program to say want to be world class mining company by 2017. We've got new technology machines, we've got plenty of things actually, not only the rope shovels. So it's good for the company because it's on the world map to say we've got the world class machines. As the mining industry continues to push the boundaries of automation, the country's largest copper mine is working to close the skills gap between expatriates and local employees through mentorship and training programs aimed at addressing the lack of sufficient, highly skilled and qualified local employees. The challenges that we have make you 
have a lot of experience in the short time because it shapes your thinking. First of all, you're going to know how your whole body is, how the geology is and all its challenges. Like right now, we have got the most reactive ground. So that poses a challenge, first of all, in charging because all our holes are very, the, the whole body is reactive. So if you charge in explosives there, you expect a reaction. And once the explosives react and then you don't get good energy out of explosives and bad fragmentation. So it makes you be aware of all these areas. And then also other minds don't experience these challenges. So they may not know how to go about them. But for us here, because of these challenges, there are things that we call sleeving. Most minds don't even know what sleeving is. Here we have, we have to know about sleeving because you want to protect the immersion from the nearby environment in the hole so that the explosives can stay in their, in their right state and their chemical composition should not be affected whatsoever by the surrounding reactive ground. What makes Kalumbila stand out uh, with regards to environmental management is that we have embraced both conventional methods and uh, also traditional methods in which it comes as one integrated package. We use locally available resources to rehabilitate or claim back uh, disturbed uh, parts of our operation. We are on the forefront. We did not start this when we began to produce uh, uh, copper here, but we started it on the onset. We started uh, putting plans in place. We started uh, putting all the required uh, ingredients to ensure that when our operation comes into full effect, it will merge with uh, the requirements of environmental management. But the experience that you get in a very, very, in the short period of time is quite enormous than it would be in another mind that may not have the challenges that we, we have. And the fact that it's a low-grade operation, so we see how everything is done. Precision is very, very cardinal. Accuracy is very, very... Every bit and every detail is very, very important because we cannot afford to get away because we're mining low grades and mining huge volumes. So precision, precision and accuracy is very, very, very cardinal. So all these things give us a wealth of experience that uh, we enable us even improve further and of course to grow our careers.